mercy tonight. You'd stand with me tonight, you would. Ain't the Lord wonderful? Praise the Lord. Yes, yes. Wow. I'm going to just, uh, I told my wife, I said, I'm going to have a lot of reading tonight. Uh, heard one, uh, heard one man say that, I, I forget how he said it, if he, I think what he was saying was, the only part of the part of the Bible he really likes, loves, is the part with the red letters. Where, in other words, he was saying, where Jesus spoke. And, uh, but I thought, you know, I guess he must have skipped that Second Timothy 3.16 where, where it said all scripture is given by the inspiration of God. It's profitable for doctrine. So, but I'm going to, uh, I'm going to read a lot of the red letter stuff tonight. And I don't think it's red letter in my Bible, but it's red letter in some. You just have the red letter edition. It's, got, it's red letters to you. And I'm going to read a lot of that. And, and it's not that I'm not going to refer maybe some to some of the apostles, but I'm going to refer mostly to the to the writings of Jesus himself and what he had to say. And so I'm going to preach from Matthew. I'm going to start Matthew chapter 5. And uh, uh, I'm going to read, read verse 1 and 2 starting off. Uh, there from Matthew chapter 5. Jesus And the Bible said, And seeing the multitude, speaking of Christ, he went up into a mountain, and when he was set, his disciples came unto him. And he opened his mouth and taught them, saying. I want to start there tonight, and uh, I'll, probably, I'll probably go kind of slow, because i got a lot, I got a lot to say now. Now, i got a whole, I'll hold notebook full of nothing. But don't let that scare you because the amounts, amount of notes has nothing to do with the length of this message. Because right. like I told you, I'm going to do a lot of reading. But I, I have a lot of notes. And, uh, uh, and I'm going to preach or teach on the subject, the story of Jesus. The story of Jesus. Pray with me. Would you, Father, thank you for your word that I've read. God, thank you for the anointing. I ask you, God, to touch each one that's in this service tonight. God, and fill us with your presence, Lord, and fill us with your desire, with a desire, God, to go on uh, further with you than we've ever been. In the name of Jesus. Everybody say amen. 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 God bless you. If you want to know the life of Jesus and, and the story of Jesus' life, if you want to know his doctrine, if you want to know his teachings, uh, you want to know his love that he had, his compassion. If you want to know all these things at, at, about Jesus, there's a lots of places in the scripture you could go and you could find these recorded. Uh, and but there's nowhere I, I don't can think of anywhere when I when I thought about it, what gave me the idea of this thought of the the. Uh, Story of Jesus. I jumped in my truck the other morning and headed up to the church, and the radio was on, uh, 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 coming and station playing gospel music, and it was playing that song, it's an old song, "Tell Me the Story of Jesus." And and I, as I listened to that song, it kind of put something in my uh, my eye, gave me an idea of a thought about the story of Jesus. And if you want to learn that story, if you want to learn things about him, I don't know anywhere in the world, anywhere in the scripture, you could go and find a better place to start learning about the uh, story and the life and the ministry, his teaching, his compassion, his love, his, his doctrine, than the Sermon on the Mount. And as he began to teach on that, the Bible said in verse number two, he opened his mouth and taught them saying, and if you'll drop right on and start reading with me, uh, we don't have a screen tonight, but that's okay. We we actually had church before we had those. And so if, if you'll follow with me. He said, verse three said, blessed are the poor in spirit, for theirs is the kingdom of heaven. This is Jesus speaking. This is the red letter stuff. Blessed are they that mourn, for they shall be comforted. Blessed are the meek, for they shall inherit the earth. Blessed are they which do hunger and thirst after righteousness, for they shall be filled. 
Blessed are the merciful, for they shall obtain mercy. Blessed are the pure in heart, for they shall see God. Blessed are the peacemakers, for they shall be called the children of God. Blessed are, are, uh, blessed are they which are persecuted for righteousness' sake, for theirs is the kingdom of heaven. Blessed are ye when men shall revile you and persecute you and shall say all manner of evil against you falsely for, your, for my sake. Rejoice and be exceedingly glad for great is your reward in heaven for so persecuted they the prophets which were before you. So I read these verses of scripture and each scripture if you'll notice begin about blessing the poor, blessing somebody. And how, how and, and Jesus is teaching us how to be blessed. If we want to be blessed, how to be blessed. I heard a minister speak and he, he, he said these words and they, and they stuck with me. He quoted the scripture that the Apostle Paul quoted. I believe it was Paul that said, Walk in the Spirit and you, won't, you will not desire to fulfill the lust of the flesh. And he said, Now I want you to notice what it didn't say. It didn't say, don't fulfill the lust of the flesh and you can walk in the Spirit. He said first walk in the Spirit and said if you're walking in the Spirit you will not desire to fulfill the lust of the flesh. So when we look at Jesus' teaching He's teaching us how to be blessed. He's te te teaching us how to grow. He's teaching us that's His teaching. And, and, and you can, and in, in these first uh, 10 or 12 verses we read here a uh, 9, 10, 11, 12 verses, you can see the compassion and the love in Jesus, is, even his voice, his thoughts, you can tell, and by that you can see his love, and you can recognize that. And if we stop right there, we could say, you know, that was, that was good. That was what many people call the Sermon on the Mount, and uh, from Matthew chapter 5. But I, as I kept reading and and, and I just couldn't quit reading. I just kept on reading. And, and I went through all the way through the 5th chapter of Matthew. And I went through the 6th chapter of Matthew. And I went almost through the 7th chapter of Matthew. And I never found a place to stop reading about the Lord's teaching. He just kept on teaching. So having said that, I believe he kept on. I believe the Sermon on the Mount just kept on going. I don't find a place where he stopped. There's a... That, this sermon on the mound, it, it, it stopped right here before I just stopped reading in verse number 12. It picks right back up and Jesus begins to talk about the salt and light. He begins to talk about us. He tells us how to be blessed. He tells us how, you know, blessed are the poor in spirit, blessed are the peacemakers. And bless, you know, this blessed are the peacemakers goes a long way. Uh, if that's the only way some people can be blessed, they'll never be blessed. Because they're a long way from being peacemakers. You know, some people would rather fight than switch. You come on, you know I'm telling the truth. And and so he's telling us how to be blessed, but he, then he turns right around and then he says, he begins to talk about ye are salt and ye are light. The, the world is looking at you and me. And and, and uh, he they're looking at us and they're looking at our walk with God. And and maybe that's why he, he picked up first all these blessings the poor in spirit and the and they that mourn and and the, and the meek and and they that hunger and thirst after righteousness and the merciful and the pure in heart and the peacemaker and the and they that persecute you for righteousness sake he picks all them up first then he comes back and says now you are the salt of the earth and you're the light of the world when people see all these first 13, first 12 child verses in this chapter, when they see that being manifest in us, then they automatically recognize that we are the light of the world. People can see that in us. They're seeing Jesus in us. Are you understanding where I'm trying to go? They see in the salt of the world. You are the salt of the earth, verse 13. But if the salt has lost its Savior, where we shall it be salt? It is this board, good for nothing, but to be cast out and trodden under the foot of men. Ye are the light of the world, he said. A city that's set on a hill cannot be hid. If you're a Christian, you, you can't hide yourself in the, in the dark. You, you can't get hid off somewhere uh, away from the crowd. If you're a Christian, 
Honey, somebody is going to notice that you're a Christian. Somebody's going to recognize you're different. That's what Jesus is talking about. He's still on this, in the Sermon on the Mount. He, that he's talking about, I remember, I recall one time it was at Steelcraft Corporation. I, I was a welder there and a fitter and, and, and it was break time and I was leaning against my, my, my bench where we worked and drinking me a cup of coffee and this old boy comes strolling over there you know you got your little crew here and a crew here and a crew here and they're all telling bad jokes and uh, usually and, and talking and and uh, and so i'm over here by myself not that i'm holy or nothing like that but i just really didn't want to hear their conversation and so he walks over to me and and and, and come to find out his dad was an old church of god preacher he walks over to me and he said let me ask you a question i said i shoot he said, are you a Christian or something? That's what I'm talking about when Jesus said, ye are the light of the world, the salt of the earth. If you got it, honey, you can't hide it. Now you can pretend you got it and not have it. But you cannot have it and not show it. Because if you're not showing it, you don't have it. And this is what Christ is teaching with this Sermon on the Mount. He's teaching that, that people are supposed to look at me as an example, as salt, just like salt saves meat and light penetrates the darkness. You turn the lights off, it gets dark. You turn them back on, it gets light. That's deep, man. We're that light of the world. Ye are the light of where I sit it that sit on the hill cannot be hid. You can't be hid. Not if you're not if you're a real Christian. Neither does me and light a candle and put it under a bushel, but on a candlestick, and it giveth light unto all that are in the house. He's still talking about us, y'all. He hasn't changed his subject yet. He's still on the Sermon on the Mount. Let your light, verse number 16. Uh, so shine before men that they may see your good works and glorify your Father which is in heaven. So He's teaching us after we're blessed how and how we're blessed. The first 12 verses of that chapter. Then He comes back in verse 13 through 16 and He tells us we're the salt and the light and people are supposed to see Jesus in us. If, if people don't see Jesus in us, it ain't the people's fault. I am a man of God. I'm a pastor. And I'm supposed to act like a pastor. And if I pastor you, you're supposed to act like a saint. You're supposed to be the salt and the light of the world. He didn't stop that. That's not where, that's not where this message stops at all. I've got 13 more pages before it stops. It didn't stop that. He, then he talks about fulfilling of the law. He's still talking about Christians. He, in verse 17 he says, Think not that I am come to destroy the law or the prophets. I am not come to destroy but to fulfill. For verily I say unto you, till heaven and earth pass, pass one jot or one tittle shall in no wise pass from the law till all be fulfilled. Whosoever therefore shall break one of these least commandments, he shall, and shall teach men so, he shall be called the least in the kingdom of heaven. But whoso shall do and teach them, the same shall be called great in the kingdom of heaven. For I say unto you, that except, here we go, here's what he's teaching us in this little passage, that except your righteousness exceed the righteousness of the scribes and the Pharisees, ye shall in no case enter into the kingdom of heaven. The scribes and the Pharisees were so strict in their teaching that they wouldn't even pull an ear of corn on the Sabbath day. And they paid tithes of everything they possessed. And Jesus said it, but except your righteousness exceed that, you, you, you won't enter in. He's still teaching to us. And now he, he didn't stop there. Now he starts to talk about murder. He said in verse 21, Ye have heard that it was said by them of old, Thou shalt not kill. And whosoever shall kill shall be in danger of the judgment. But I say unto you, 
Now he's speaking again that whosoever is angry with his brother, now brother, I'm going to tell you something, that, that, that digs us deep. Whosoever is angry with his brother without cause shall be in danger of the judgment. And whosoever shall, whosoever say to his brother, Rekha, shall be in danger of the council. But whosoever shall say, thy food, shall be in danger of hell fire. He's still teaching us. Uh, this is after we're blessed. This is after we've done that that God said to do. Therefore, if thou being, if thou bring thy gift to the altar, in other words, if you bring yourself to the altar, you are, you're trying to offer yourself to God and you remember that thy brother had all against thee. Not that you got all against him. You remember he's got all against you. He's upset with you. He's mad at you. Leave there thy gift before the altar and go thy way. First be reconciled to thy brother and then come and offer thy gift. Agree with thine adversary quickly whilst thou art in, by, or in the way with him lest at any time the adversary deliver thee to the judge and the judge deliver thee to the officers and thou be cast into prison. Still, verily I say unto you, verse 26, I say unto thee, thou shalt by no means come out thence till thou hast paid the uttermost father. So we're talking about the story of Jesus. This is what Jesus taught on earth. This is what he taught his disciples, his apostles. And he didn't stop there. That's not where he stopped this message at all. Then he starts talking about adultery. Listen to this. Verse 27, same chapter. Ye have heard that it was said by them of old time. Children, he ain't changing the subjects. He's still right square in the middle of where he wants to go. That's what I'm trying to get to us tonight. He said, uh, that I heard it said of, 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 of them of old times. Thou shalt not commit adultery. But I say unto you, that whosoever looketh on a woman to lust after her committeth adultery with her in his heart. Now that's hard teaching. But I'm reading it. This is, if we really want to know the story of Jesus, we really, really we want to know his teaching, his compassion, don't you want to be like him? Wouldn't, wouldn't you just love it if somebody come up, come up to you, not in a Pharisee way now, but come, somebody come up to you and said, oh, I just see Jesus all over you. I remember when my, uh, my oldest daughter got married. Uh, my, my sister, there was a bunch of them at the wedding, and she told me and my wife, she said, Michelle is so beautiful. And she was her Joel just don't know what he got. And she said, and she don't have a bit of makeup on. And said, it's just a glow. I wanted to think it's the Holy Ghost glow. That's what I wanted to think. Holy Ghost glow. Hey, I'm just Holy Ghost glow. Jesus is saying, if you look on a woman to commit adultery or to, to, to lust, you committed adultery already in your heart. And if thy right eye offend thee, <laughs> pluck it out and cast it from thee, for it is profitable for thee that one of thy members should perish and not that the whole body should be cast into hell. And if thy right hand offend thee, cut it off and cast it from thee, from thee for it is profitable for thee that one of thy members should perish and not that the whole body should be cast into hell. Are we still wanting to be like him? It's some hard teaching. But this was his teaching. This is what he taught when he was here. And he didn't stop there either. He kept, he kept right on going. He didn't begin to talk about oaths. He said in verse 33, Again, ye have heard that it had been said of them of old time, Thou shalt not forswear thyself, but thou, but 
shall perform unto the Lord thy host. Did you know the Bible said, now I'll, have, now I'll have to go somewhere else and pick this one up, okay? But did you know the Bible said that it is better that you never make a vow as to make one and don't keep it? It, it kind of goes along with that teaching that says it's better to have a millstone tied around your neck and pitched in the river as to offend one of my little ones. Now, this, now I'm still talking about the man that we're studying his story, his life story on, his ministry, his, his, his technique, his compassion. Uh, but I say unto you, swear not at all, neither by heaven, for it is God's throne, nor by earth, for it is his footstool, neither by Jerusalem, for it is the city of the great king. Listen carefully. Neither shall thou swear by thy head, because thou canst not make one hair white or black, but let your conversation or your communication be yea, yea, nay, nay, and whatsoever is more than these of evil. Uh, you know what he's saying? He's saying, if you say yes, let it be yes. If it's no, then let it be no. You don't have to swear. You don't have to, you know, uh, uh, cross my heart, hope God stick a needle in mine. You know, all that's not necessary. Now, if you're a child of God, yes. Brother Willingham, if you ask me, do I like steak? Yes. And let yes be yes. That's the that's simple teaching. That's not, it's not over. That's not, he didn't stop there. He talked about Swearing, when he says swearing, he's not talking about cursing, he's talking about making a vow, swearing. Then he talks about your enemy, like you're going to have some enemies. He's still talking. You have heard that it has been said, Thou shalt love thy neighbor and hate thine enemy. Did y'all know all this was in the Bible? But here's what he said, But I say unto you, love your enemies, bless them that curse you, do good to them that hate you, Pray for them which despitefully use you and persecute you. That ye may be the children of your Father which is in heaven. For he maketh the sun to rise on the evil and on the good and sendeth rain on the just and the unjust. For if you love them which love you, what reward have ye? Do not even the publicans the same. He was rough on the publicans. And if ye you salute your brethren only, what do ye more than others? Do not even the publicans do so, or, do, or don't the publicans so? Be ye therefore perfect, uh oh, even as your Father which in heaven is perfect. What, what so few little verses say? They're simply saying, treat people like you want to be treated. Do unto others as you would have them do unto you. Have you ever heard that scripture? This is what Christ is teaching. In other words, he's saying, it's not, it's not profitable for me if I only bless someone that I know in return can bless me. He's saying, if I really want to be blessed, bless someone that I know cannot return it to me. That's what Jesus is saying. It, it, it won't do any good if I if I uh, uh, give someone a thousand dollars that I know has got money because if they got money they don't need my thousand dollars. You understand? But uh, th that's not what it's all about. What it's all about is now I don't I don't believe now I, I stand corrected, but I think I'm right because I prayed about this. I don't believe God expects you to empty your pockets and and to people that's too lazy to work. I don't believe that. Because, if I, because that contradicts the scripture. The scripture says if man don't work, he shouldn't eat. Yeah. It's just talking about, it ain't talking about a hand out, it's talking about a hand up. Right. Helping those that are less fortunate that you know are going to get back on their feet. Not that necessarily you know they're going to get back on their feet and give you back your money or whatever. Or not just money. Anything. It don't have to be money. So Jesus is saying, if you're going to bless, if you want the blessing, bless people that curse you. I get what he's saying? Then that despitefully use you. 
that take advantage of you. It better have felt like you got taken advantage of inside of me. Y'all just did raise hands. No. <laughs> you have. We all have. And so Jesus is saying, bless those people. Bless them. Uh, and then he said, he talks about giving to the needy. Take heed that ye do not your eyes before men. Verse number, chapter 6, verse 1. To be seen of them. Otherwise, ye have no reward of your Father which is in heaven. If I give a thousand dollars to somebody, let me pick out somebody. Brother Paul. Joe. Anybody, any other takers? If I say, if I give a thousand dollars to Brother Pope, and I do that, and I want to make sure that Roger sees me do it, that I've got my reward from Roger. That's right. That's what he said. Because Roger thinks, that was good, Brother Creasy, to do that. Are you following me? And so I've got my reward already. My reward's not going to come from heaven because man has already given me my reward. That's exactly right. But if I just kindly walk around here and, and talk to old brother Poston and just kind of shake hands with him and slip him a thousand dollars in his hand and nobody knows it but me and him, then I get a reward from God. I was at camp meeting one time. Poor, I was poor as a snake. Man, I didn't have enough money to get out of town. If it took somebody, said if it took a nickel to get out of town, to to uh, uh, say how that go? It took a nickel to go around the world. I couldn't have got out of town. And was it camp meeting? And, and uh, was it was it Savannah, Tennessee? I was laid off on my job, and church at Savannah was paying me fifty bucks a week, whether I needed it or not. Every week, I mean, without fail, I was broke. I was out in the backyard working in the little garden that I had, and camp meetings going on in Perryville, and. and and a man called me on the phone and said, are you coming to camp meeting? I said, no, sir, I don't guess I will. He said, uh, well, I said, uh, I'd like to see you. He said, uh, uh, I said, would you come if you had a room already paid for? And so I said, well, you know what? I'm trying to think, what am I supposed to say? And he said, well, I've got a room already paid for. He said it was paid for someone else and they didn't show up. And so, and I don't know if he was straight the truth or not, but he said, so it's free. So it was on a Monday, so we loaded up and we went on up to camp meeting. And we had a good time. We had a little money, not much. And about Thursday, well, we that little money turned to no money. And because we're feeding, we're feeding all these girls, and, you know, and, and you know how kids like to eat, and, you know, just like other kids. And so I told Mary, I said, at the church, at, at, I believe it might have been on Wednesday night. I told Mary, I said, uh, go ahead and we get our stuff together tonight. Her first thing in the morning, we'll leave on out because we done got, we, we broke. And this man come to the door. He didn't know Not the door crop. Remember him, Joe? The bro, old bro, bro, brother. He said, praise the Lord, brother. Shook hands with me and gave me a $100 bill. Mm -hmm. Not then, no day, $100 bill, a lot of money. Yeah. And so I told my wife, I said, never mind packing. We'll stay a couple more days. Now, what, what I'm saying is, he didn't do that to be seen of me. Because nobody was there but me and him. And that's what God is teaching us here. We do our do good deeds, but do them with the right attitude. We talk about the Sermon on the Mount. We talk about the teaching and the story and the life of Jesus Christ himself. This is what he would have done. I believe that. Now, I lost my place. Uh, take heed. Okay. Therefore, when thou doest thine arm, do not sound a trumpet before thee as the hypocrites do in the synagogue and in the streets that, that, you may, uh, that they may uh, have glory of men. Verily I say to you, they have their reward. Didn't I just say that a while ago? But when thou doest arms, don't let your left hand know what your right hand that thine arms may be in secret, and thy Father which seeth in secret shall reward thee open. Now that, I don't think that covers, like, okay, if I got up here tonight and said we're going to receive a special love offering, uh, 
we have someone in the church that's in need and we need a couple of hundred dollars and, and all that. And I don't think that's talking about that uh, and, and you marching around and putting some money in the pan or something like that. That's not what that's talking about. That's talking about just going and, and doing your uh, deeds to be seen that you get a reward of men. Then he talked about prayer. He goes right on and he says, And when thou prayest, that thou, uh, uh, thou shalt not be as the hypocrites are, for they love to pray standing in the synagogue and in the corners of the street that they may be seen of me. The key to this, the key to the prayer, the key to the giving, and key to that is the key to it is don't do it to be seen of men. Amen. That's the key. That's what we're talking about here. Uh, don't use repetition. Don't use vain words when you pray. Jesus told us, and uh, then he goes, he tells us how to, how to pray. Uh, he, he says, but, but, uh, but ye, uh, be not ye therefore like unto them, for your father knoweth what things ye have need of before you ask. After this manner, he says, uh, therefore pray ye, our Father which art in heaven, hallowed be thy name, thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our debtors as we forgive uh, forgive us our debts as we forgive our debtors lead us not into temptation but deliver us from evil for thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever for if ye forgive men their trespasses then your heavenly father will also forgive you it's, it's the scriptures filled with examples where uh, one in particular place, if I don't have it wrote down, but maybe I can get enough of it that you know what I'm talking about. Somebody uh, had forgiven this person of a lot of debt and wiped it clean, and he goes out and finds somebody that owes him and puts him in jail because he couldn't pay. This is what, what this is talking about. If I forgive, you know, sometimes it's hard to forgive some people. Some things happen, and it's hard sometimes. But Jesus said, if you will do that, then I will forgive you. Now, he's implying we got a merciful God. He's full of mercy and compassion. I'm reading it to you right out of the book. And he's implying that if you don't forgive, he's not going to forgive. A matter of fact, he may be going a little further than implying. He may be just plain saying it. He talks about fasting. He talks about when you fast, don't fast that people will know you're fasting. In other words, don't fast to, to make people look at you as, as if to say you're fasting. If you're going to fast, that's fine. You need to. We all do. Some things only come by fasting and prayer according to Jesus himself. But we pray for the right, or we fast for the right reason. Not to be seen of men. He talks about treasures in heaven he talks about laying up treasures in heaven don't lay up treasures on earth he talks about in verse number 19 of chapter 6 let not your uh let not lay not excuse me lay not up for yourselves treasures upon earth where moth and rough does corrupt and where thieves break through and steal but lay up for yourselves treasures in heaven where neither moth nor rust does corrupt and where thieves do not break through and steal for where your treasures are, there will your, heart, will your heart be also. The light of the body is the eye. If therefore thine eye be single, the whole body shall be full of light. So then he goes on. He's still not finished. He's, he talks about uh, worry. He talks about uh, not to worry about certain things. Therefore I say unto you, take no thought for your life, what you shall eat or what you shall drink. Nor yet your body, what you shall put on, is not your life more than uh, life more than meat, and your body than raiment. He's saying, "Don't the Lord uh, doesn't He feed the fowls of the air? Doesn't He doesn't He take care of the animals that don't even reap or don't and they and they get they they live in barns and this and that? Doesn't He take care of them? And and we got we got worried people worried themselves to death." about what they're going to eat. Jesus is just simply saying, the Lord is going to take care of us. Did no one, I, I used to get on to the children about not eating. How many has ever heard you? How, maybe you've done it. Oh, you need to eat. You need to eat. I've never seen a kid starve with food on the table. If they're hungry, they'll eat. 
And, and Jesus is telling us here, uh, we can't change any, any part about us. And He said that, that your heavenly Father knows you have need of all these things that we're talking about. So don't, for, don't take no thought of what you... Then that don't mean just sit back on the couch somewhere and saying, well, you know, God's going to... You, you might be like that guy that's waiting on the Lord to deliver him from that flood. Yeah. Or he's sending a boat, and a two boats, a helicopter, and he wouldn't get on either one of them. Uh -huh. So you don't just sit back and not do anything. Right. And a man not over in this building, he wasn't a member here. He come up, he came... A couple Sundays in a row, and 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 matter of fact, you give a hundred dollars every day, every every Sunday, and it didn't look like you had a hundred dollars, but he did. And I was preaching, teaching on this on this about giving, and he'd give back, God give it back to you, da da da. And he jumped up in the back right there and said, "That ain't true." And it shocked me, you know. I never knew about. It. And he said, "I gave to that church at Millington." He's talking about uh, Sister Simpson's church. I gave and I gave and I gave, and God never gave me nothing. I said, well, who did you get the money to give? He said, I worked for him. I said, well, who did you get the strength to work? Then I got him back on his heels right to then. I got him crawfishing. I said, besides all that, you're out of order. Sit down, shut up. And he left. I don't know why. But if we give, God gives it back. God knows what I have need of. He knows. Then he talks about don't be judgmental. Don't cast judgment on other people. Boy, this is a hard one too. I'm about through, y'all. Judge not that you be not judged. If I judge you, God, God's going to judge me. You don't have to compromise with somebody. You don't have to say, well, that's okay. You know, I know you look like a dirt bag. God understands. You don't have to go, go that route. But you can't be judgmental. And God won't judge us. For what judgment you judge, ye shall be judged, and with what measure ye meet, it shall be measured unto you. I heard a preacher say one time, Brother Willingham, this is a true story. This pastor was talking, and he said that this person had really done him wrong. And I think he maybe even cheated him out of some money. And it really hurt this pastor. And he's praying about this guy. He can't get over this situation. He can't get it out of his mind. It's, it's killing him. It's pulling him down. He's praying and he's asking God, God, you know this is what right. He said, you need to do something about this, brother. You need to do something. Brother. And he said, one day in prayer, God spoke to him and said, okay, I'm going to take care of this situation. You tell me what to do and I'll do it. You name the punishment. And I'll do it. And he said he prayed and, and said when God started talking to him about that, he started bawling. And so he finally just told him, said, Lord, never mind. I've been wrong about this situation. That's what this is talking about. Judge not that you be not judged. If my brother does me wrong, I'm, I'm supposed to be willing to forgive him. Now that don't mean I have to set myself up and let him do me wrong again. But it does mean I need to forgive him. One preacher said God forgave Judas but he never did put him back in the treasury department. So, you see what I'm saying? Let, let me hurry. I've been, I've been lengthy. I know that. But I just want to tell you about this. It didn't stop there either. He gets to talk then about a wide gate and a narrow gate. This is all in a in I'm going straight through. I'm not going back and forth. He said, enter, enter to straight gate. This is Matthew chapter 7. I've already got over into Matthew chapter 7. Enter, enter to straight gate. Straight is the gate. Broad is the way that leadeth unto destruction. And many there be that go in. Go in thereat. Because straight is the gate. Narrow is the way which leadeth unto life. And few there be that find. Then he spoke of false prophets. Then he spoke of false disciples. He, he, he warning us that everyone, everyone that saith, Lord, Lord, will not enter the kingdom of heaven. But he that doeth the will of my Father which is in heaven. Remember reading those verses? He talks about false prophets and false 
and false disciples and false teachers that that uh, bear uh, false fruits and, and uh, uh, bring things that uh, is not uh, lined up with the scripture. Did you know if you study the scripture, if you read the scriptures, when a person speaks false, you'll know it. You'll recognize it. No prophet. I don't care who he is. I don't care what organization he belongs to. No prophet ever spoke in the name of the Lord truth that crossed this. This and the prophet has to be subject. Are you understanding? The Bible said, Moses speaking, a prophet shall the Lord thy God rise up of your brother and like unto me and him shall you hear. And it shall come to pass that everyone that will not hear this prophet, it shall be required of him. That prophet he was speaking of was Jesus Christ. And what we don't, if we what we don't hear of the Lord's Lord's words, it's going to be required of us. Then he talked about foolish builders. This is my last foolish builder that build on sand instead of a solid foundation. You know what that means? That means they jump around and they don't have a footing, a foundation under them. They've not been taught because they don't stay around long enough to be taught. And so he talked about, therefore whosoever heareth these sayings of mine and doeth them, and doeth them, I will liken him unto a wise man who built his house on a rock. You know the story, the floods came, the winds blew, the, rock, the water come, and the building stood because it had a good foundation. But then there's another builder that built on sand and the same wind, same storm came and, and tore the house down. And we're no different. There is going to be an enemy that tries to tear us down in every, every area we can. So Jesus is talking about wise builders and foolish builders. Now I'm going to ask you, how many wants to be a wise builder? You want a good foundation under you. There's a lot of what, everything that I brought to you tonight, I feel was recorded from the mount, from the, uh, uh, from the, uh, the uh, what did I call it a while ago? The uh, story of Jesus, the story of Jesus. And it came directly from the uh, scripture there from Matthew, starting at Matthew chapter 1, and it went plumb to the 7th chapter of Matthew. Matthew chapter 5, verse 1, through the 7th chapter of Matthew, verse 14. And it goes on and keeps talking about and And what we've got to understand is, this is the story of Jesus Christ. If you want to know anything about His teaching, read Matthew 5, 6, and 7. And it'll open up words to us. It's the sermon we call the Sermon on the Mount. Stand with me if you would. Don't you just love the Lord today? Ain't He wonderful? Come around the front and let's pray together. Would you do that? It's not many of us here, but we can all gather around and, and just have a word of prayer together. Would you do that? In the name of Jesus. Amazing grace, 
services over the weekend. Going to have a great time. Brother Mark will be preaching Sunday night. Mark, Mark McLean. And uh, Sister Creasy will be back in the saddle again on the Sunday school. Keep keep Sister Creasy's family in mind that are involved her niece. Uh, we'll probably be going down there either tomorrow night or Friday one, I guess. And uh, So keep us in mind in your prayers. Amen. Nothing else. Everybody say, Lord, Lord. thank you for your word tonight. Go with us to our homes. Bring us back in Jesus' name. Amen.